Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernard from the BTN HD, and yes, we're at it again, uh, dealing with MDT 2013 and Windows 10 technical preview. And today's episode is all about deployment properties, so let's get started. So within your deployment webbench, uh, I need you guys to right-click on your primary MDT deployment share node. You probably changed the name. Uh, so we're going to right click and we're going to go to properties. Now we already dealt with rules on the last episode and general is just a breakdown of what, uh, what's supported. So it gives you a nice description, uh, comments, uh, where is the UNC path of the deployment share, the local path, and uh, platforms that support it. It's supported for 86 and 64 bit. Now, if you want, you can enable multicast for deployment share, which requires Windows Server 2008 R2 Windows deployment services. I'm not going to I'm going to I'm not going to enable that as of yet because I haven't fully uh, deployed WDS on this machine, which that's going to be in later episodes. Uh, what we're going to be dealing with is Windows PE and the monitoring uh, tab. So on Windows PE, real self-explanatory. This is where you could customize and add a little bit more features with your web image. Now you have uh, by default it goes into your 86-bit platform, or you go to go to the 64-bit. It's the same thing on both platforms. You just gotta make sure if you make modifications on the 86, and those modifications you want them to go to the 64-bit. You gotta change your platform to 64-bit and just do it again manually. So on the 86, it's gonna create your ISO and uh, your custom background bitmap file is right here if you want to change your background this is where you would change it I was what I would normally like people to do is uh, get the dimensions of this particular bitmap uh, image and modify it and then just replace it uh, but make sure you make a backup of the original uh, from here you can do an extra directory to add extra stuff your scratch disk space is actually 32. You could change it to 64, 128. I leave it to 32. I leave the default. And if you want to do a generic boot image, uh, generic boot image is useful for troubleshooting purposes. It contains all the same components and drivers, but no scripts, which is just pretty good, especially if you're having a particular problem with your deployment and you just can't figure it out and you just want to eliminate all the nonsense, like all the scripts, and you usually need a like a plain Jane. Uh, environment to troubleshoot this is what you would normally do I've hardly I haven't played with this part yet but uh, from my experience for people telling me that they use it a lot and they like it so uh, maybe in future videos I'm gonna I'm gonna actually test it out and show you guys how it really looks and feels now in the feature section uh, this is where I love to add a couple of things within my deployment I like to use uh, .NET Framework and as well, oh, you know, I love this Windows PowerShell because I'm a huge Windows PowerShell um, person. I love doing that stuff. Uh, you have other things that you could do. You could do point-to-point -point protocol over Ethernet. Uh, you could do remote network driver interface specifications. You could do secure boot commandlet. You could do storage management commandlet. You could do a lot more legacy fonts, enhanced storage. Uh, you do so much, but the ones I like to do is .NET Framework and Windows PowerShell. By default, you're going to get the Microsoft Data Access Components, uh, which I'm assuming that is like uh, for like Microsoft um, database kind of uh, features. And then you have your drivers and patches. Now, by default, your drivers and patches, you're going to get the selection profile as all drivers and packages. So what's going to happen is... Everything that you have in your driver nodes as well as the packages is going to be uh, imported inside your your WIM image. Okay, The more drivers that you have and the more applications and packages that you have as being imported into your WIM image, that WIM image is going to get huge. So I normally leave it as default because again, when I'm in a testing environment, I like to have everything as the default. If you're in a production uh, that's when you start playing around with the task sequence and start, you know, saying, okay, if X, Y, and Z is this during the deployment time, okay, push this out. But later on, I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Uh, you can include only the drivers from the following types, uh, all the network drivers and all the mass storage drivers. That's by default. You need these two. Definitely, you need these two because if you don't have the the NIC driver during your deployment, uh, your your physical machine is not going to is not going to communicate with your deployment share okay so if you don't have that particular NIC driver that your uh, machine needs to communicate correctly 
to your deployment share, you're going to have problems. Your mass storage is another problem. If during your deployment, if you have the NIC driver and you don't have the storage uh, drivers, during your deployment, uh, it says, okay, I'm able to communicate with no problem. You hold, you, you go to your task sequence, you, you tell it what applications you want, uh, you do all that modification. Once you hit finish and it goes to the part to partition it, if you don't have the storage drivers, it's going to, it's going to error out. It's going to basically say, uh oh, something happened. And that problem is, is because your deployment doesn't have the particular drivers to recognize the hard drive that's embedded within that physical machine. So that's a problem. Uh, if you have any video drivers or any all system class drivers, like, uh, you know, for the iSCSI or for webcams, all that other stuff, you can include it. I normally do it for my testing environment. I just leave those off because I'm only pushing only one NIC driver, and that's the. That is, that, yeah, that's the only one I'm pushing out is the NIC driver, right? It's the only one I'm pushing out. Now, don't get me wrong. You don't need to choose all drivers and packages. If you hit the drop-down menu, you're going to see much more like all drivers, all packages, everything. Now, the everything part I wouldn't want to do because that's just going to make your web image extremely big and you don't want that. Uh, nothing. I don't recommend nothing and sample. I don't recommend these twos at all. Uh, these selection profiles are actually located inside the advanced configuration selection profile, which I'm going to show you guys later on. So don't don't worry about that. Just leave it as default. And the last thing is the the monitoring uh, tab, uh, which is by default disabled. I'm going to enable it for this. Uh, the monitoring host is the BJMDT, and uh, their event port is 9800, and the data port is 9801. You can change these if you want. Most likely, you might have to talk to your network administrator so he could enable these two ports within your firewall if they're not blocked. And then you apply, and then you're you're good to go. And that's it, guys. That's all about um, deployment properties. There's a lot more. Um, again, it's really up to you. Make sure whatever modifications you did on the 86-bit, you do it on the 64-bit like I didn't do. So I have to go inside the 64-bit and I got to enable .NET Framework and Windows PowerShell because remember I did it on the 86, but I forgot to do it on the 64. So I'm going to apply that. And once I apply that, awesome. So that's it, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If any questions, please uh, leave your comments right below. If not, uh, catch me at Twitter at BJ Tech News. I'm always answering questions over there. Uh, don't forget about hitting that like button because it does support the video as well as this guy. And I catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.